Welcome to the Data Whisperer Podcast, brought to you by Data Migration International. The podcast where you hear the latest news from the world of data and digital transformation. The Data Whisperer Podcast is hosted by Bill Vall, a technology industry veteran and enterprise software professional. Thanks everyone for joining us today and welcome back as we continue our discussions about the intersection of technology and business. Once again, we're going to talk about an interesting data topic, the role of data and tech, and particularly in the industrial segment. Hi, everybody. My name is Bill Wall, and I'm honored to be the host of this podcast series, The Data Whisperer, brought to you by Data Migration International. I'm always fascinated about how to apply technology to help companies meet their IT and business challenges. And having worked for years in the IT industry, I know the power of data and how it's been driving success for customers in many industry segments and for many years. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Killian Martin, a business strategy consultant for Accenture based in Zurich, Switzerland. He, uh, in addition to his work at Accenture, had more than 10 years at GE in manufacturing quality management, so he's a perfect candidate to be on the podcast. Killian, welcome to the Data Whisperer. Thanks a lot, Bill. Glad to have you with us. So let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about your work at Accenture. So my work at Accenture is in the business strategy area, specifically for industrial clients. Um, so that means that part of the work that I support is around improving how businesses want to grow, how businesses want to develop themselves across the spectrum. But of course, being part of Accenture, uh, very often that leads us to digitization and uh, business transformations. So it's quite a broad scope that we cover. Great. I, I... When we think about starting a discussion like this, I think we could probably agree that every business and every industry, to some extent, is going through a digital transformation. Maybe transformation now is the new norm. It's ongoing. It's continuous. Where do you see most of the work that's getting done in the industrial segment? Uh, well, I see work across the board. But there's uh, a lot of hot areas at the moment. And uh, one, of course, that I need to mention is AI. All businesses are asking questions around it. Um, everyone wants to know how that applies to their own business. And so um, I won't delve too deep into that topic. But uh, from my experience and uh, my background in uh, manufacturing, lean process improvement, what I see there is uh, a huge potential for uh, automating a lot of processes uh, across the board. We probably could do an entire program or programs on AI because the topics range everywhere. I I did spend some time looking at your LinkedIn profile when we knew we, we were going to have you on as a guest. And uh, you touched on a topic there that I thought was kind of interesting, uh, servitization. Can you explain what that is? Uh, of course, Bill. So servitization is effectively changing your business model to go from, let's say, a more traditional product-centric model where you produce a product and you sell it on to a servitized business model, which uh, there are many of, but it's basically the concept of selling a service. So the product still is your own property as the producer, but instead you are handing over to your clients the service that that product uh, performs. And so um, you can create business relationships that are much more fruitful mm -hmm. that way by focusing on the value that that product produces and effectively making sure that your product is serving the end purpose. For our technical listeners, it's taking a traditional product offering and taking it to an as a service, the way software is offered as a, as a service. That's a, a mindset, a way to think about it. Absolutely. Or you could also think about the transition between old-fashioned VHS tapes, DVDs, to the uh, services we have today, streaming, streaming models. Netflix. Yep. Mm. Totally interesting. I, I know that you've spent a um, lot of your time in uh, the discrete manage manufacturing segment. What, what differentiates discrete from other types of manufacturing, and specifically as it relates to the importance of data? So the biggest challenge in discrete manufacturing is that you are not producing uh, in large volumes. So you cannot set up a process that is repeatable and continuous easily. And so what you see in that industry, in that space, is that there's a lot of project type businesses where um, there's a lot of products that are coming out of a production line and each product is different 
uh, from each other. And so when it when we talk about data and how to improve processes in those kind of areas, uh, it becomes very challenging because as you optimize for one project, it might be something completely different for the next. Mm-hmm. And so um, these are uh, the the type of uh, this is the area where I've spent most of my years in. And I find it fascinating because uh, when you go into a manufacturing shop floor, uh, many times it doesn't look like you're in today's world. It looks mm-hmm. like you're 20, 30, 40 years in the past. Interesting. So you've got to really apply uh, modern methods of process uh, redevelopment and management into what is a relatively customized space. Exactly. And so driving change in these kind of environments is very tough. You have on the one side, the cultural um, changes that are very Mm -hmm. difficult to um, push through. Uh, But on the other hand, any IT processes or automations that you're trying to drive are likewise also very difficult. Um, It it involves getting uh, people on board, um, standardizing in places where you might not necessarily want to, Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a lot of uh, trade-offs to consider. Interesting. When we uh, talked about preparing for uh, today's podcast, you identified three areas that tend to be the your focus as you think about working with clients in those spaces. Let's talk about those uh, a little bit. You started with this concept of value streaming. What's that all about? Um, so value streaming is the concept of um, taking process mapping across your entire business and understanding what value you're creating Mm -hmm. as you go through it. So um, you can go very deep into the level of detail, but you can also make those analyses at a high level to understand in a ballpark figure uh, what you're dealing with and where you should then uh, go a bit deeper. If you think about uh, a potential example of that, um, a, a process on an unnamed client that you work with, help our audience understand how to think about that. Um, So usually you start value stream mapping at the far end. So you're trying to first understand what is the value that my whole process is creating. Um, And then from there, you work your way backwards. So you're trying to understand how are we as a business going to produce that value? Mm -hmm. So in, in, instead of the more, traditional way of going from the start and understanding how to build to something you're building backwards to understand how can we make this happen in the leanest way so with the um, least possible effort getting the maximum value out of it interesting Uh, when i think about manufacturing i think about the opposite of discrete uh, and i think about the mass production of large quantities of uh, either raw materials or finished goods. And that tends to be in the business process and efficiency world, all about automation, but in discrete, is it, uh, is it about automation? Is that's what's really driving uh, process improvements or, or generating new values? In some niche areas it is. So there will always be what we call process islands where you can automate something fully, where you can automate things maybe partially. Uh, but when you look at the full value stream of large projects, uh, that is uh, really, really tough. So in order to do that, you would need capabilities that simply don't exist today. You've talked in the past about simplification rather than automating processes. What do you mean by that? So when we simplify processes, we are inherently making them more efficient. Mm-hmm. We're reducing the time, the cost, the effort needed for them. And so my approach to process improvement is always around looking what you can eliminate out of the process as a first step. Mm -hmm. Uh, You might have heard the quote that if you automate uh, waste, you are only producing more waste. And so I've seen this a lot in the past where um, you might have processes that are complex. You try to just tie them together, automate a full chain of steps. Um, I saw uh, before uh, fact- manufacturing factory floors where a whole supply chain was um, automated. So you would put the raw material at the front mm. of the line and get a finished product out on the other end by combining a lot of uh, process steps, a lot of robot arms. 
And uh, that, that was simply not sustainable because of the high amount of maintenance behind it. And uh, now I'll probably relate it back to the topic of the podcast, which is data. And that's no different with data. Very often, we will find ourselves trying to automate processes in IT where um, we haven't first looked at how to simplify them. Mm. And what that basically generates is a lot of IT maintenance, which is a right. hugely underestimated um, cost for many businesses. That's a very true point. I was talking with a CIO just the other day who was talking about uh, something called change fatigue. And there's so much change going on that IT workers, IT leaders are just simply exhausted. So I understand this con concept of simplification. But you, you brought up data that's central to our podcast. So many of our listeners are constantly struggling with managing data. And I hear a lot of frustration with getting to 100% um, perfect data. Is that possible? In short, no, it's not. And uh, the reason for it is um, there is no such thing as perfection. It doesn't matter where you look at it. Yeah. You might think a, 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 you might think there's perfect data in a data set that you own. I can assure you it's not. There are way too many um, variables. And what I see a lot is the the uncertainty of data okay. is slowing down a lot business decisions um, because people are not comfortable with that right. nowadays. And uh, this would be one of my messages for today, which is I, I think people need to get more comfortable. They need to understand that it's really, really hard to get anywhere close to perfection. Uh, there are cases where you need your data to be a bit more precise, for sure. But especially in the kind of environments that I've worked in, in industrial space, in discrete manufacturing, you will have um, very poor data and business leaders will need to make tough decisions based on that. And the cost of not making a decision is usually much harder, much higher than not, um, not making it. That's a, so, that's a real learning lesson for the audience there. And I suspect it certainly depends on the circumstances. There are plenty of chief financial officers I've worked with who, from a statutory or legal uh, point of view, have to be 100% price on the numbers, the financials. But I, you're clearly suggesting to the audience that we just need to be a lot more comfortable in moving the business ahead, even if it means we have to take that decision with some degree of imprecise data. And obviously, every company is different and every data set is different. Is it 2%? Is it 1%? Is it you know, a quarter of a percent? And I don't know if you can give a generalized answer, but to what range are you typically speaking? Well, as you said, it, it will vary on the environment that you're working on. Um, the typical areas that I work on, sometimes we're talking 80-20. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it might feel very extreme. Uh, you know, whoa, are you going to make a decision without being sure of that last 20%? Uh, but sometimes you just have to, right? Every time, every time we do these podcasts, Killian, I'm amazed at the, the lessons for our audience that pop out. Let me finish with one last question. You are often quoting Winston Churchill, and you had a quote that was, I think, apropos for our discussion here. What is that quote, and what does it mean to you in the context of this discussion? The quote is, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And what that means to me is um, it frames really well the lean mindset. It frames well the idea that whatever we do can always continue to be improved. And even if we do fail, there's always going to be learnings. There's always going to be a way to come back to it and succeed. Gillian, thanks so much for joining us today. I think there were a couple of great lessons, and we really enjoyed having you on the program. Thank you so much, Bill. It was a pleasure to be here. My thanks to Killian Martin from Accenture. To learn more about his work and engage with Killian directly, you can do that on his LinkedIn profile at Killian Martin, and that's M-A-R-T-E-N. Thanks to all of you for joining us our podcast today. We encourage you to continue to join in the discussion. We'll have details on how to engage with us as our program wraps up for today. Our podcast series will regularly continuously take a look at the latest news from the world of data and digital transformation, so stay tuned. And for everyone on the Data Whisperer podcast team and at Data Migration International, I'm your host, Bill Wall. So long and talk soon. 
We hope you enjoyed listening to the Data Whisperer podcast, brought to you by data experts, Data Migration International. You can find out about our business and services by visiting jibs.com. That's J-I-V-S dot com. To follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn, simply search for Data Migration International. Stay tuned for further podcasts in the Data Whisperer series from Data Migration International.